This is Visitor's Book and I'm Maya, your host. In this program, we're going to be meeting with diplomats and foreigners who live here in Pakistan, and we're going to find out what they really think about the country. So our guest today is Abdul Rahman Al Salehi, a communication engineer from Yemen. So let's go meet with him. Hello, Abdul Rahman. How are you? Hello, Maria. So nice to see you here. How do you like it? Do you come here to F9 Park often? Yeah, I come regular on regular basis. I was coming here for oh, yeah? walking, yeah. But sometimes when we got busy, I couldn't come, you know. Okay. But otherwise, you know, it's a very good place for, you know, clean weather. And, yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, it's refreshing, you know, your body, your mind. Yeah. Especially if you have someone to walk with. It, exactly. Yeah. And now the weather is so yeah, nice Yeah, it's really well. awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So you uh, first came to Pakistan in 2003, right? Yeah. Can you tell me how that happened? Uh, you know, the story of this at the beginning, I mean, uh, during our studies of um, uh, higher secondary school in Yemen, my mm -hmm. family just was encouraging me that to get scholarship and go abroad okay. for study. Right. All the time they were just, you know, encouraging me. And this is, it wasn't only just for my family. I mean, for different families there, many families, they are encouraging their kids to get high grade and go abroad for okay. studies. So um, I remember when I finished, I applied to uh, Ministry of Higher Education in Yemen. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was uh, like um, many options. Uh, one of them, it was Pakistan. Okay. So I just select Pakistan and I went to my uncle. I was living with him at that mm -hmm. time. And I went to him. I told him I select Pakistan. Yeah. And uh, he was all the time encouraging me regarding. And he was talking. He came to Pakistan in okay. two, uh, I think in 1990s, something oh, like right. this. Uh, it was. I think 95, 96, 98, oh, wow. something like that. For like a work thing. Uh, he came on, um, at that time, uh, like a work. On, he was working in uh, Central Bank of Yemen. Oh, okay. So when he came to uh, Pakistan on training courses, it was like for three months. Mm -hmm. When he came back at that time, we were in uh, secondary school, I told you. And uh, I was living with him. Uh, he was basically, my father was a farmer. Right. Yeah, and we have big farm like this Fatma Jana. Oh, Bigger okay, wow. That, yeah. Huh. So uh, I was just uh, living with him as he is in the capital. Mm -hmm. So all the time he was talking in a positive way regarding Pakistan, the people of Pakistan, and how oh, wow. the people are humble here and cooperative. Okay. And uh, also about the weather, and it's a very good. He was saying once he was saying that it's a very good place even to study and work. Mm -hmm. uh, how long he, did he, he stay here? He stayed for three months, okay, but he came to know the people, you know, yeah. well, someone when he came with experience uh -huh. and we were kids at that time, we absorbing, you know, the knowledge, the uh, yeah. informations which, uh, you know, the elders are saying to us. Of course, yeah. So I applied and then I came to here to uh, UET Peshawar. Okay. Yeah, I joined and what, what were you studying actually? Uh, electrical engineering oh, wow. at that time. Okay. Yeah. I studied with Peshawar. Yeah. At, yeah. Uh, University of Engineering and Technology, Peshawar. Uh -huh. So, uh, uh, just you can imagine that uh, a kid at that time, a young, I mean teenager, uh, with uh, full of energy, full of confidence, thinking that he is going to change the world, not okay. only just yeah. the study. <laughs> but when I reach here, I discover that I am without any, I don't uh, understand English at all at that time. Okay. Because our course oh, wow. in Yemen, it was even mathematics, it was in Arabic. Okay, of course. Physics in Arabic. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay, we have one course, small course, it was in English, but this, you know, just like, um, uh, prerequisite courses, you can say. Mm -hmm. oh, so wow. I remember when I entered even to the class at the beginning, the first day. Yeah. I came and uh, I entered to the class. The teacher was explaining, uh, delivering his lecture. Uh huh. So with the time, uh, I mean, after he finished his um, lecture, he said, "You, what's your registration number?" I don't know English. Oh, <laughs> Just like, there was a foreigner with me, like yeah. one from Yemen, one from Somalia, one from mm -hmm. Palestine. 
And I asked them what he said. They said, easy, give him your registration number. Okay. <laughs> he said, I don't have the registration number. Uh, uh, please, anyone explain to him that my uh, registration is under process. But mm. I don't want to waste a single, you know, day out of the university. Yeah, yeah. Just I reach and I join them. Of course. Then he was wow. talking to me. Um, he said, uh, you came already late. Mm -hmm. Half of the course has been finished. I mean, seven lectures like, or, and seven experiments, remaining seven or eight. Mm -hmm. What you will do with that? For me, I don't understand English. Yeah. I told them, you know, just I was memorizing like four or five sentences. Wow. Uh, I am, my name is Abdurrahman. I am from Yemen. I came to Pakistan for study. I can't, I can't speak English very yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> and you can imagine after his, you know, he was advising me and explaining for five minutes. Then I shocked him with this answer. Wow. He said, if you don't know English and I don't know Arabic, how I will communicate yeah. with you and how you will understand the course? Yeah. Um, you know, I realized that it is really now I am in a different situation. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very difficult, you know, for me to uh, understand the people and of you know, without language, it became like a barrier. It became, it became like a difficult thing yeah. for me. So I went home. I tried to study myself, self-study. I was, I spent whole day with uh, studying only just one page of translation and understanding understanding okay. that page wow. so i realized it's very difficult i called my father i told him after like one week i told him that it's very difficult for me to continue my study mm. so you were almost ready to give up already yes. at that point I, I, wow. I, at the first week then he told me do you have hammer in your room mm -hmm. i said no, i don't have hammer he said, please go and bring hammer. I told him I can't speak. How to, can I tell them, please give me hammer? Yeah. He said, please check if you find hammer and just hit the wall. Can you break the wall from the beginning? Then he said, just use your mind like hammer. Wow. And just, yes. And just, you know, dig on this uh, yeah. box and try yeah. to understand. So uh, from that day, then uh, second day I went, I make a very uh, strict um, schedule for myself mm -hmm. i went for institute I, when i come back from university at two uh, afternoon mm -hmm. i just take my lunch then i registered for english course it was like for three months um, i finished the course at six i come back at 6 uh, p.m. to my room, study until 2 morning. Wow, yeah, that's, it was, that's a long time. Yeah, it, was, it was very, <laughs> very strict. You know, yeah. I make a very strict, I made for myself, I mean. Wow. Uh, within um, three months, I was able to talk, to read and to write. That's amazing. Yes, and from here I started you know, understand the people. Yeah. And I realized how much they were incredible friends. I mean, yeah. uh, surround me even without my language. They were trying to explain to me, to help me out. But, you know, uh, language is a barrier. Of course. You know? yeah. yeah. But they tried uh, their level best to help me out. So mm. uh, when I finished my engineering, I finished it with first division. Uh, That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Uh, Impressive. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, after that, you know, I make this, I, I made this, I mean, um, a story of mine, mm -hmm. like a guidance even for the students, newcomers who came yeah. after me. I told them that, you know, just use your mind as a hammer. And <laughs> yeah, like, you know, the advice of my father, <laughs> I told them also, you know, you have to just fix yourself with a very strict uh, schedule and uh, you have to be a very hard worker. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone, uh, uh, God give him a help, give him mind, and give him the resources which he can do something. Yeah. Only what he need, he need to just make a hard work, a hard work with a consistent. Exactly. So, yeah. You that, can that, achieve anything then. Yes. Yeah. Then uh, I told you we achieved and uh, I finished my uh, BS in electrical engineering from mm -hmm. there. And I was planning to go back to Yemen. Yeah. At that time, I just called my father and family. I told them that now I finished. I am engineer. Yeah. I have to go back. Yeah, yeah. They said, okay, uh, you are welcome. Uh, one, uh, my uncle, he told me, why you did not take admission? For of, further uh, education. Yes, for yeah. further education. Mm. 
And it was also in my mind, I have to, but not now. Now I have to go and live with my family, settle there, get job, and you know, to yeah. be close to the relatives, you know, after like three, four, uh, uh, four five years yeah. away from them. Of course. And, uh, uh, then uh, just when uh, I came, to, I went to Lahore, I took admission yeah. in uh, electrical engineering from UET Lahore. Yeah, so okay. that you can say I am a son of you All right. <laughs> yeah. So I a to totally different city then I guess. Yes, I went to Lahore and uh, Okay. How would you compare like I mean Peshawar was probably pretty different back in the day from what it yeah. is today and then you went to a in, really big city like Lahore. What, in what was that like? Three, four, you know, uh, at that time I remember uh, we had a difficult uh, communication with our families in uh, our homelands. Of course, because there yes. was no there like, was no social media, and, yeah. yeah, no smartphones. It was many difficulties, but just only we were uh, contacting th contacting them at that time uh, on a conventional call. Yeah. I mean, just we go to. Um, Call center, call center or something and just yeah. we call yeah or uh, sometimes even at the first year i remember i wrote you know on a post office oh. i was writing <laughs> letters <laughs> yes and you can imagine that when you write you smell the documents and nowadays everything is electronic yeah. it became online things mm. so it was difficult and it was even difficult for my mother which she of missed course. me at that yeah. time but uh, all of them, when I was saying that I'm coming back, they said, no, 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 in summer. Mm. I was saying that I, I'm coming in summer, I have summer for two months. They said, no, 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 please check any course and take it. Yeah. Just keep yourself because you are they building yourself. Yeah, we brought you to this life. Yeah. And now you have to be uh, successful. You yeah. just manage yourself. Mm -hmm. As much as you are succeeded, we are happy. Yeah. So I, I uh, continue, you know, to stay uh, I mean in Peshawar and as I told you that there was the infrastructure at that time of Peshawar it's different from now mm. I mean um, yeah. what I have seen what I recognized I mean at that time uh, I told you that the it was like globally that the uh, internet and the um, smartphones it's not uh, it wasn't available I mean it was in globe things not only in yeah, Peshawar exactly but the people of Peshawar at that time and this time also I mean they are fascinating they are yeah. very good you know they are very cooperative you know uh, we couldn't even feel that we are away from our home really so they yeah. made you feel that yeah, at home they are generous they yeah. are cooperative in Eid even in Eid you know uh, if you, you are here since like many years you know that there is Eid al-Abha and mm. uh, Eid al-Fatr during Eid even they came to us and they take us to they took us to their villages. Oh that's so nice. Yeah, or to oh, wow. their homes. I mean we never felt that we are away from our yeah. families. When someone take you to his family and uh, introduce you to his uh, mother, brothers, sisters, I mean you feel that you are one of them. Yeah. So I was enjoying really it was enjoying time. All right, time to take a short break. I'll see you in a little while. Welcome back. I'm here in conversation with Abdul Rahman Al Salehi from Yemen. So, shall we take a little walk? Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. Not? So, you were telling me that you went to Lahore and then you studied for a master's there. Yeah. But how did you end up in Islamabad then? Uh, I told you when I was. I just I finished my coursework from there. I registered for my thesis. I was working on it, and in the same time, I was looking for a job. Okay. So to uh, you know to financial myself to fund uh -huh. myself and yeah. Uh, so I applied in different ways. I received a call then from Islamabad from one uh, friend. He said, if you want to be a reporter here in Islamabad. Oh, okay. Yes, in, in uh, <laughs> Kuwait channels or any other channels, Arabic channels. Right. So. Uh, when I, it was, yeah, it was far from my field. I mean, it's not in my field. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I have uh, capabilities and they knows me that, you know, he has a capability to be like a reporter. No problem with me. Yeah. But uh, the thing is that when I reach also to Islam, but I receive another call from the embassy mm -hmm. that we need a network engineer, which it's related the to Yemeni my field. The Yemeni embassy. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. They said we need one to, who can solve the LAN network of the embassy and maintain mm -hmm. and troubleshoot and do all the stuff, you know, of the engineering uh, networks okay. in the embassy. So wow. I prefer this because it's related to my field. Yeah. So I uh, stayed with it and it, I worked for like... Um, now I have experience of 10 years 
Wow. But uh, not only in engineering, I mean in the field of engineering, because when you work in the embassy, then you have to do a lot of stuff. Yeah. So I worked on um, educational uh, side oh, to wow. help the students, uh -huh. uh, assist them, guide them, um, uh, follow them in their studies, follow them in their admissions, in their visas, trying to solve all their problems which they are facing here okay. in Pakistan. Are there uh, many Yemeni studying yeah, here? Yeah, we have like 300 students. Okay. Here. So, so I have to follow, uh, to follow all of them, yeah. uh, either in Pakistan or those who are in Yemen still okay. they want to come. Who want to come or the, the way you did, people. yeah. Yeah, or yeah. the nominated new students who who wants to come here. Okay, so, interesting. So, uh, yeah, I, I follow all their, uh, I mean, matters. Mm -hmm. I uh, have also, I mean, a good, I built good relations with the different, uh, you know, departments and ministries yeah. uh, for them, different universities. Um, until uh, I got a chance to um, start my PhD. Yeah. And then I started my PhD here in Islamabad because I was looking at that time during this, I was looking also for admission, which it is near to me so that I can work and uh, study, study yeah. in the same time. Exactly. Oh, that's great. So I found an international Islamic university uh -huh. and uh, I stuck myself in that. It was from morning from nine to four working in the embassy. Mm -hmm. uh, at 4.30, our classes started in university until nine. Oh wow! So, so busy. and you can imagine, see my yeah. uh, uh, schedule, how much it was busy. <laughs> yes, twenty-four-seven. Wow! And in the same time, during you know a PhD, it's not a joke. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, yeah. you need to yes. really invest. Either time. you have to be or not to be. This is yeah. the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, uh, when I go back to home, also I have to do something on my work mm -hmm. until like uh, eleven, twelve. Oh wow! Then I go for sleep. Yeah. So. Uh, with grace of uh, God, I finished, I mean, uh, my wow. things. Uh, and now you're I still working. Also, uh, uh, st still working there. Mm -hmm. What was the topic of your um, research? And my PhD? research is uh, radar and communication integration, or uh -huh. uh, it's a new topic. Basically. Yeah. It's not, uh, uh, it hasn't been done before in Pakistan. Oh, wow. Yes. So it is the first research lab. Now they have the, the uh, research group. I mean, mm -hmm. they have uh, created in the department just to continue my thesis. Oh, okay. Yeah. How interesting. So, yeah, it's very interesting yeah. and um, we are working on this it is uh, I told you it's in radar signal processing mm -hmm. uh, we try to use the radar which it was normally for military applications and okay. we are using it now for um, communication as well our work it's focused you can say mostly on uh, the vehicular communication right yeah so we have uh, published many papers in this and we are mm -hmm. working I am supervising also the groups mm -hmm. in the university. Now I go there, I, I uh, follow up them. But the main issue which we face, I mean, and you can say in the education system, mm -hmm. not only here and also in Yemen, mm -hmm. is that uh, the theory. That's why, you know, you can see many people who graduated, they did not find a job. Mm, because there is, studied, a gap. Yeah. Yes, there is a gap. Yeah. So, um, this is one of the obstacles, I think, and the drawback of the, um, uh, of the, I mean, education systems available nowadays. Right. I mean, in the third world, world countries. It's a big issue. Yes, it's a big yeah. issue. Yeah, it's when, when there is a gap between the research and the industries, hmm. then you feel that you are graduating people to the street. Yeah, uh, and exactly. Yeah, yeah. But if there is any fund, if there is any cooperative from uh, industries with the universities or something like this, mm then definitely teacher, professor, he can find the fund uh, to give the students. Students, they can work on uh, such projects to improve or develop that industry or to solve any problem of the uh, commercial life. Yeah, This great. is the thing. So should we find somewhere to sit down for a minute? Uh, as you like. Yeah, let's go. Let's So let's talk a little bit about Yemen. Where are you from in the country? Are you from the capital or somewhere else? Uh, originally, my father originally from uh, 
mountainous area. Okay. It's in Taiz. Hmm. Uh, but shifted when he was a kid with his father to um, with my grandfather hmm. into Hudaydah. Okay. So in th there he by a land I told you a farm. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he met my mother there from that area. I mean from Hudaydah. Right. And uh, they got married. <laughs> so I am from Hudaydah and days in the same time right and yeah. you grew up somewhere in the country <laughs> yes or in the yes city? I, I, I no it was outside in the farm I told oh you. wow yes so yeah. I grew up until I age of 12 something like this then uh, I have been shifted to my uncle in capital yeah and so okay. he's living in capital yeah. so I have shifted there to continue my uh, education yeah so, um, of course, like in 2003, obviously the environment in the world, like that was the time of the war on terror and there were a lot of stereotypes about countries such as Yemen and Pakistan. How would you say people in Yemen viewed Pakistan? Did they think it's a dangerous country or they were like, oh, it must, must not be that bad because, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, look, this is, you know, um, both countries, you can say Yemen and Pakistan, they are under the uh, a bad reputation at that time mm. of the international media. Exactly. So, uh, both of us, we were feeling sympathy for each other. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Even when I came here, I remember I met my friends or something like this. Uh, no one, I mean, um, feel that I am new or I am a foreigner or uh, I mean, I am from a country which uh, suffering from terrorists yeah. or something like this and in the same time I couldn't also feel that these people they are under this kind of threats mm. you know of terrorists but when I reach I mean when I came here I saw the people okay there was in the media definitely the, in the media they were talking many things uh, a bomb blast is there killing yeah. is there uh, you know it was as you know this mm. it was very um, famous and popular things yeah but when you come to here and you see the people you live with the people it's normal thing. yeah yeah it's not that bad yes, as it's it that made bad. out and the to same be. time they were yeah. asking me what about yemen is they there also yes they were interesting yeah. I, I i supposed to tell them that it's simply like your country yeah you hear in media something and you see in the ground something else. very different yeah. Yeah. so we were feeling like sympathy to, yeah. to each other <laughs> this is the thing so that's interesting yeah. all right and i'm sure your family never told you like no no don't go to pakistan it's no so they did not yeah. they, they just mm. they were encouraging me yeah. and uh, just they the believe studies. that you know everyone has his own uh, his limited age yeah huh? so <laughs> better to make use of it yes yeah. it's like this you know a kind of a uh, Faith in uh, fate. Huh? Yeah. So if your life is ended, then it's okay. We will pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. This is what. There's the nothing thing. you can do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah nothing. Yeah, they said. They, I remember once. Uh, my mother. She was sad. You know that. Oh, uh, you know you are going. You are leaving me and something like this. Mm. But she was saying that if even if you stay with me. If death is coming to you, it will come to you with even here, in, yeah. yeah, in front of my eyes. You can so, get hit by a car in yes, front of your yes. car. Yeah. So she said, just go and continue. Yeah. yeah. This is the thing. So you also mentioned that some of your family members visited here. Can you tell me a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, that was uh, my father. He came in 2018. Mm -hmm. Also, oh, quite recently. Uh, yeah, it's recent. Yeah, yeah. with my, he brought my brother who was suffering from sickness. I mean, oh, he no. was uh, he has oh, uh, uh, yeah uh, leukemia at oh, that time. Okay. So uh, at that time, due to the war in Yemen, mm. and when we realized that he has a leukemia, just I contacted uh, friends uh, in Chokat Khanum. Mm -hmm. I told them that I have uh, my brother and I want to bring him to here. They said, send us the medical report, we'll see his case. I mean, okay. his, if it is um, uh, more developed, I mean, we cannot do anything. Um, then I sent them the reports. They said, OK, it's uh, still it's in the beginning because he was like uh, one and one and a half months when he affected with yeah. this. So uh, my father brought him to here. But mm -hmm. during the way from bringing him from Yemen to here, it took like 14 days. Because you know, it's uh, Yemen nowadays. It's under war, so it is under um, a block of uh, there is no airplanes, no mm. seas. I mean, no transportation, international uh, yeah. flights. Yeah. So they came like by roads fro oh, no. to Oman to Muscat, mm -hmm. and from there they have to get their visa to enter Muscat. Right. Then from there they have to get their visa to come to Pakistan mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. 
and you can imagine this is a kind of suffering i mean uh, of traveling with someone have having a leukemia yeah. uh, it took like 14 days but he reached here then we admit him in chowkot um, khanum it was in peshawar they shifted him direct to lahore okay he took his uh, medicine like for one year but uh, unfortunately he passed away oh, okay. so i yeah. gra we graved him here in islamabad okay, okay. yeah is uh, that very common, like that Shokat Khanum takes in um, patients from other countries? Uh, Shokat Khanum, it's an uh, international hospital. Okay. Not, it, not, it doesn't become only just for Pakistan. Mm. I mean, receives from Afghanistan many people. Okay. Receives also from Yemen. Uh, it, maybe my brother was uh, the first case, but I am sure that if there is someone who applied or something like this, they will not say anything. Yeah. I mean, it is uh, international things. So they told me that when I was visiting my brother there, they said even we have from India, okay. yeah, in the wow. hospital. We have from different, from Bangladesh, from uh, Kazakhstan. They said we have from different nationalities, I mean, here. Yeah. So it became like an international hospital. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, very professional in this. Yeah. But you know, it's, uh, cancer is a very difficult disease. Yeah. This is the you thing. Can't, no matter what you do. Yes, no matter. I mean, just you, they give treatment. Mm. up to you know the best level they have yeah. but uh, disease is dangerous yeah, this unfortunately. Is but I'm glad you found at least you could at least yeah. try to help yes here. yes, yes. so good. my father continues staying with me here for like uh, one and a half year he left uh, in 2019 okay. he went back to okay. Europe. Yeah, he so that's was, nice he, you got to spend some time with yeah, him. Yeah, he was very happy even his, in his stay here. Yeah. What I realized that he reminded me by the first time when I came here. I oh, was really? without language. Okay. And when he came here, he was without language at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, what I realized with him when he go to, uh, you know, to shops, to, uh, to uh, um, uh, malls or anywhere, he can talk with the people. He yeah. understand with them. No need for the language. But there is some kind of understanding, I mean, uh, yeah. they create, you know, especially okay. old people, they create by <laughs> sign, you know, sign things. Yeah. Uh, there is, that's why I told you the people of Pakistan, they are very cooperative, hmm. very uh, humble people, you know, you can live and um, uh, enjoy your time easily without feeling that you are a foreigner. Oh, yeah, so yeah. they don't make you feel like an outsider, no, basically. No, 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 no. Yeah. at all, at all. This is the beauty of Pakistan. I wanted to ask you, but have you learned any Urdu? Yeah, I yeah? have Urdu, yes. Yeah. So, first you learned English and then you started with Urdu. Uh, I learned English then from Bishawar, from my friends there, because in Bishawar they are speaking Pashto. Yeah. So, I learned few Pashto, not uh, much, I mean, okay. with them at that time. Then when I shift to Lahore and I came to Islamabad, I learned Urdu. Okay. Yeah. Would you say you're pretty fluent now? Yeah, I can, I can talk with them, I can understand them, I can, I can convoy what I want. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There is, you know, they will feel that this is a foreigner. Yeah. From, uh, They'll hear the accent. Yes, from the accent, mm. from the, you know, grammar, something like this. Mm -hmm. But at the end, I can convoy my message to yeah. them and get the from them thing. what I want. Yeah. And this is the main <laughs> thing. You can imagine someone, uh, you, I, 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 we created understanding at that time when I had no English or Urdu exactly. or anything. Now, Alhamdulillah, we are in a very better yeah. position. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <the great. thing. laughs> yeah. So you've also gotten married. Yeah. When, when did that happen? In 2016. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that time I was planning to go to Yemen to bring my wife, but okay. the war has been, mm. I mean, happened. Yeah. So just um, uh, they managed the things and uh, she joined me here. Okay. So yeah. How does she like it here? Uh, she likes this place. I mean, yeah. she likes Pakistan and also she has graduated, uh, she did her um, uh, master from Germany, uh, oh, wow. yeah, in 2014, like, something, right. 15, and um, now she's doing her PhD here in education. Oh, that's wonderful! Yeah, yeah she's and doing. She's, so obviously, she's she didn't have to start from the beginning of yeah, learning yeah. English no, like you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. she is uh, fluent. Yeah, that's now she's great. Uh, she's doing her PhD in uh, in uh, the she finished the coursework. Mm -hmm. She will start her. Uh, research i think in the next semester that's from excellent. also from islamic university okay yeah it's that's near to nice. us yeah <laughs> this, this, this thing and um, beside that we have one uh, daughter okay. she is three excellent. years now wow. uh, we are expecting also the next baby after two months wow uh, that's so exciting <laughs> yeah and, uh, life is going on yeah mm. <laughs> that's good 
but like you must both be quite busy then. I mean, she's Ye working yeah. towards her PhD and you're working and doing everything. Yeah, how, it, how do you manage? Yeah, <laughs> you know, you can say that our home, our house, it's like uh, classrooms. Yeah. I have my uh, room, which it is uh, with whiteboard and uh, ballpoint okay. and just uh, working on my research, keeping working on my research. She's mm -hmm. working on her research. So last, uh, I mean, before yesterday also, I was working on my research and she said that, but you have uh, like interviews, something like this. she was telling me. Yeah. I told her, but there is a presentation. I have to do it on Thursday in the department yeah, yeah. Uh, for the newcomer students, mm -hmm. for the uh, new PhD students. So also my uh, supervisor, Ajaz uh, Manzur Qureshi, he is the supervisor of all of us. Okay. I mean, mm. Yeah, he is um, uh, interested to give the lecture and uh, he is also like a dedicated person to the field. Right. So uh, when he say you have to do this, I mean I have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> There's no choice. <laughs> yes, I have no choice. Mm. So uh, we have to keep our work on research. Mm -hmm. As I told you that as a new field in bringing telecom telecommunication and radar together for the sixth generation, which uh, nowadays people they are going to launch fifth generation from this year, uh -huh. yeah. fifth generation of wireless communication. Yeah. But sixth generation will be uh, launched in 2030. Okay. So we have, as engineers, we have to work from today yeah, for the course. people after 10 years. Wow, that's yeah. fascinating. All right, time to take a short break. I'll see you in a little bit. Welcome back. I'm here in conversation with Abdurrahman Al Salehi from Yemen. So you've lived now in three different cities in Pakistan, Peshawar, Lahore, and now Islamabad. Yeah. Do you have any, like a favorite city or are they all so different that you can't even compare? Uh, Islamabad is my favorite city okay. because it's quite greenish. You can That's see true. how uh, weather is healthy in it. Uh, yeah, there's no pollution. Uh, yeah, no pollution. It's. Uh, a green area you feel that you are in a forest yeah huh? that's true yeah, yeah. You feel like that you know for someone writing a poetry I just I need to take my uh, mind my okay. pen and come sit here the imagination already will <laughs> what language do you write poetry in, in Arabic Wonderful. Yeah. That, is that something you started already like when you were still in Yemen or you started uh, I here? started when I was in Yemen, mm -hmm. but when I reached here also, I, um, you know, it became with uh, missing my homeland. Oh, wow. I, I wrote many poetry on that. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, so, Have like, you published anything? Yes, I published wow. one, one book. I Impressive. Published, in yeah. Yemen? Uh, I, I published it, for, yeah, I published it there, but it's, uh, I, I wrote it here. Oh, what, what, what type of poetry is it? It is, I told you, most of it, it is either um, uh, missing my homeland okay. or regarding the homeland or right. regarding also the flittering things. Oh, okay, yeah. how interesting. So, in love stories yeah, or yeah. something like this. Yeah. So, uh, uh, it's uh, the other one, uh, second book also, I, I mean, I have it, but it's incomplete. Mm -hmm. uh, for the beauty of Pakistan also, I wrote a book, but it's still draft. Yeah. I call it like a forgotten flower. Oh wow! At that time when I came here, yes, when I came here in 2000, you know, four, five, six. I mean, during that time, uh, I was recognizing that media just are taking from Pakistan the negative yeah. things, not the positive things. Mm. So I was writing like small articles about mm. the beauty of Pakistan to tell the people, look to this flower. No one uh, discovered it. Why it is a forget? A, yeah. forget, a, a forgetted flower. Mm. So I wrote like, um, I told you like a novel, which it can uh, talk about like two lovers who are uh, moving around all the Pakistan, discovering the beauty of Pakistan to show the world the beautiful of Pakistan oh, at that wow. time. And I call it Forgetting Flower. That's so beautiful. Yeah, but <laughs> until now it's not published, unfortunately. Okay. This is the thing. Wow. So um, uh, compared, I mean, came back again to the compared of Pakistan, these three different cities. Yeah. Uh, in Lahore and in Peshawar, you can see the history. Mm, exactly. But here, you can uh, find your inner peace. You that's know, true. Uh, you know, you feel that peaceful place. Yeah. This is the thing. Yeah, that, that's true. I mean, they, and they're so different. Like in Lahore, you have all the architecture yeah. and the Mughal yeah. past and all yeah. of that. And here, I, it's, I, I guess it's a more comfortable yes, life. Yes, yes. 
So uh, it's uh, totally different, yeah. totally different uh, between Islamabad and uh, Lahore. Yeah. Lahore once uh, uh, the Associated Press, I mean, uh, it, uh, has having you know Associated Press agency have many channels like the Sharqa channel mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, Saudi channels. They called me and they said we need a report and we want okay. you to be a reporter with us. Uh -huh. I used to be a reporter with them okay. up to date. Uh, so I went to Lahore, I make a report regarding Bajai Masjid. I went oh. to, um, uh, you know, to just to show the uh, features of Pakistan also to the world. That's I so nice. Yes. I have also done uh, like um, uh, Rohtas Fort, if you oh, visit wow. that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, many places I did like more like 10 reports or 20 yeah. reports regarding this. I mean, you've obviously traveled a lot in the country. Yes, then. I traveled in all Pakistan, you can say, yeah. except uh, Honza and Gilgit. Oh, really? Askardu. These so those three are places, left. Yes. But Karachi, I visited, I stayed there for one month. Mm -hmm. I stayed in, uh, uh, in Lahore like one and a half year. Exactly. Uh, yeah. In uh, Bishawar, definitely four years for yeah. my studies. And uh, here in Islamabad now, like in nine to ten years. Wow. I mean, it's. Uh, do you so, have a favorite uh, place or a favorite trip that you made yeah, in the country? Yeah, I, uh, I I remember when I was in my honeymoon, I took my wife and we went to Naran Kazan. Oh, that's so nice. Muluk, you know, that, that area, you know, Saif Muluk, you know, place. Oh, it's amazing, yeah. It's a very amazing place, you know, and if you want more, I mean, um, uh, quiet place and uh, near to Islamabad, uh, there is one Khambur, if you uh, yes, see it. The Khambur Lake. Khambur, yeah. Yeah, you, Khambur Lake, you can see the um, uh, water front of you, and yeah. there is a small hotel there you can stay, I mean, stay for one or two nights. Uh, uh, the other one is uh, Natyagali. Yeah. When I go near. there, Natyagali, that place, I feel that uh, I close my mobile there, you know, I yeah. close everything. <laughs> just like a retreat. <laughs> yes, you, I feel that I am uh, mediating myself. You yeah. know, uh, someone is getting like medicine to just to be. Uh, recovered from the uh, stress of the life, especially like me, I have uh, you know a very strict uh, schedule in Islamabad. Mm -hmm. So when I have uh, vacations for four days, five days, or something like this, just I go to Mari or Natyagali or the areas which it's near to Islamabad and close my mobile there for two, three days. I feel yeah. that I reset myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And you also mentioned that you really enjoyed going to the Wagga border yeah, closing ceremony. Yeah, I have been there. I have been once. I went with the ex-ambassador or ambassador okay. at that time. Uh, it was also uh, holidays for us, like for three, four days. So me and him just we hang up uh, to there to um, Wagga border. We enjoyed there. You know, there you can come when you reach there. You see the people, and the other side is Indians. Yeah, so interesting. And this right? side is Pakistanis. And um, everyone, you know, like uh, I, what I call it at that day, it is like industry of nationalism. Yeah. You know, when you want to increase the uh, nationalities and to make the people, you know, more um, patriotic. Yeah. Yes, uh, mm. to their country. Just bring them to there. You yeah. see that you can you can <laughs> read the history there. Exactly. When you see, also you know the salutes between between um, the um, yes. soldiers and when it's, they shake um, hands yeah, and they it's shake amazing hand yeah. and when they, it's really nice very you yeah. know very amazing things yeah. and uh, i have seen i mean many places in pakistan yeah. not only these places mm. I, I told you i visited most of pakistan exactly. during my stay here it wasn't only just a course study or work uh, uh, place it's also study of the country yeah. to study i study it's the different. history of this country i study the uh, uh, populations the geography of it the uh, how the people live and how the uh, political uh, is going on i mean yeah. we keep you know to update ourselves as we are a part of this country That's now true. I mean. so we have to keep ourselves in this always updated yeah do you have like a particular period in the history of pakistan that you're interested in or is it just all of it is fascinating for you from the history of pakistan during these years which i am here i have seen the pakistan grow in front of my eyes of course it's changed yes so much. Uh, yes changed so much the infrastructure has been changed uh, the system of uh, education the system of life you can say that it has been uh, further, further enhanced and changed. Right. And from my work in the embassy on uh, culture exchange program and in consulate sections, in media, and all, 
all the time we are just focused on one thing under the uh, definitely under the supervision of our ambassador he's mm-hmm. very active in this yeah. field so we just try our level best to enhance the uh, relationship and the um, further further enhancement of the relationship and bilateral relations between Yemen and Pakistan yeah. in any aspect in any where I mean we are trying and we hope that one day we will see for example uh, people of Yemen and people of Pakistan they can have a dual nationality okay yeah, yeah we are working on this uh, this project if it's succeeded yeah because you know due to war mm. many Pakistanis who were living in Yemen uh, they came back to uh, Pakistan, Pakistan. Yeah. Yeah. but during their stay there they got their nationality Yemen nationality and so uh, and they uh, their families also born there so some of them they came to the embassy to return the passport or something like this and they are all the time they are requesting is there any dual nationality so it can allow right. us to take both of them it would make things yes, easier yes yeah, it will it will make their life easy so i hope that and if this succeeded the dual nationality i mean i will be the first one to apply for the pakistan really? nationality <laughs> yes i love this country that's why i'm sure yeah yes. so let's let's talk a little bit about yemen then i mean um I mean the culture have you noticed any major differences in the culture like the way people behave maybe or the way they dress or anything of that sort uh in uh, between yemen and pakistan in their culture you know as a muslim countries both of them they have communalities i mean yeah. many common things of course. Uh, and also they have like um, we have a tribal areas there okay. they have tribal area All in right, pakistan yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, they have like, um, you know, that uh, the dress is different. It is, the, right. Yes, it's it, different. It's like, I've seen... Uh, we, have, we have like a one, long, yeah. Yeah, long, long um, uh, uh, kameez. Yeah. We call it kameez. Mm-hmm. It's long with the... Um, the cap. The cap. The head, yeah. yeah. And uh, also we use a knife, this one, you know. Right, you see. Yes, yes, I've seen those. Yeah, you have seen beautiful, this. yeah. Yeah, this is our dress. I mean, it's mm-hmm. totally uh, different from here. Yeah. Uh, Besides that, besides the dress, I mean this dress like in, in Yemen, different cities, different places, they have different uh, uh, outfits. Uh, yes, kind of oh, okay. uh, outfits. So uh, other cities they are using, for example, um, two pieces. Mm-hmm. One is uh, kameez, uh-huh. like this one. The other one is, um, they call it a small one, uh, we call it ma'waz. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's small one. I mean, um, uh-huh. but I mean it's two pieces. Again, with the knife yeah. and with the cap. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it, you can't see if you open just here many dresses, you will find different kind of dresses there. Here, most of the people, uh, what I have seen, uh, and you recognize also this, uh, they are using shirwa Yeah, exactly. Yes, more, it's a common for all Pakistanis, yeah. men and women. It's so much more comfortable than Yeah, it's clothes, more, very, very comfortable. Yeah. You know, you can run easily. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, what about food? Is, is there any difference between, like, do you also use a lot of spices in your dishes in Yemen? Uh, f- in Yemen, we did not use that much spices, okay. but, um, uh, you know, there it's uh, different. We have, like, mandi food, we mm-hmm. have, like, uh, mandi, it's... Uh, traditional think, Arabic. Yeah, traditional yeah. Arabic. It's, uh, we call it, like, madbi, mandi, we have, like, right. fahsa, salta. This is a kind of uh, foods which it is um, not that much spicy yeah okay yeah, yeah here okay here spicy but for me for someone like staying lo- for a long time here in pakistan yeah i am familiar so you've gotten used to the spices yes i'm, I'm familiar <laughs> now <with laughs> do this. you have a favorite dish uh i like uh, all karai kind of karai. Karai. yes yeah. i like it, uh, <laughs> you know biryani and uh, plow also kebab i like you know, all, right. all yeah. type of foods i mean mm-hmm. yeah mostly but uh, i like karai much okay this is the thing yeah. what do you eat mostly at home then uh karai yeah <laughs> it's a pakistani food no she is cooking yemeni food okay. i mean and uh, she is cooking sometimes pakistani food okay I mean, uh, as she is here she has also she's learned food. yeah yes she learned That's a lot so nice. sometimes she call her friends or something from university or neighbors or I just when I came back home I found I find them both of them they are cooking at the uh, kitchen what are you doing today we are, are going to eat a Pakistani food okay today we are going to eat <laughs> Yemeni food I mean, <laughs> that's nice yeah you know we have to enjoy hmm. all right then it's time for a rapid fire round are you ready yeah okay shalwar kameez or a suit uh, both okay yeah. <laughs> 
Depends on the weather, right? Yeah, it depends <laughs> on the weather. <laughs> Lahore or Karachi? Uh, Karachi fish, Lahore culture. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Faisal Mosque or Badshahi Mosque? Uh, Badshahi Mosque. Okay. Uh, Kagan or Natia Gali? Uh, Natia Gali. All right, it's nearer. <laughs> yeah, nearer. <laughs> um, Sanaa or Islamabad? Uh, both of them. All right. Yeah. Um, salta or biryani? Uh, <laughs> you came to the food. <laughs> I like yeah. both of them. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Yes. <laughs> Areka or rasmalai? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, then uh, areka. Okay. Areka, we call it. Oh, okay. Yes. Areka. Yeah. Got it. The first thought that comes to your mind when I say Pakistani weddings? Fancy. Mm -hmm. Pakistani food? Mutton uh, curry. Wagga border. Uh, the place, uh, the factory of uh, nationalism. Mm, interesting. The best thing about Pakistan? People. Great. All right, then you get to write in our visitor's book. Let me just open it for you. Here you Thank go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's see what you wrote then. Thank you, people of Pakistan and the government of Pakistan for everything you give to Yemen. Thank you, Maya, for having me on your show. Thank you so much for being on the show. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so much. That's it for today. Please join me again next week. And don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts at indus.news. Stay home, stay safe, goodbye.